You know, the Peter Jackson Get Back docu docuseries has revised uh, the way a lot of people have looked at the Beatles, their uh, wives, their, you know, associates. But there's one thing that's really, really come back to fore that's going to be talked about in the next few weeks. Now, within the the movie structure, there's a there's a guy, a very well known, uh, what do you call, a director, who is guiding them on the Get Back Let It Be sessions. <clears throat> now, Michael Lindsay Hogg is considered one of the originators of the music video style. Now, he comes from a uh, entertainment background because his mother was the uh, very important actress, Geraldine Fitzgerald. Now, now Sir Michael Lindsay Hogg, uh, he's called a fifth baronet. Now, he's an American-born Irish television, film, music video, and theater director. He began his career in British television, and again, Lindsay Hogg became a pioneer in music film production. I directed uh, numerous promotional films through the years, but especially for the Beatles and the Rolling Stones from pretty well the mid-1960s to 1980s. Following his work with his bands, he branched out into film and theater while still maintaining successful careers in television and music video production. Now, he was born in New York City to, again, Geraldine Fitzgerald. He was educated at Trinity School in New York and at the Choate School in Connecticut. For most of his early life, he understood his father was Fitzgerald's husband, Sir Edward Lindsay Hogg, to whom she was married until 1946. Now, when Michael who was 16, his mother reluctantly divulged that there had been pervasive uh, rumors that his father was, of all people, Orson Welles, and she denied him, but in such detail that he was left confused and dubious, and Fitzgerald evaded the subject for the rest of, the, of her life. Now, I don't know if it's been uh, any DNA test done uh, on him or through the Orson Welles uh, lineage, <coughs> but all I can say he does look like his mother, but he looks like Orson Welles, so we'll leave it at that. Now, now Lindsay Hogg knew Welles well. He worked with him in the theater and met him at intervals throughout Orson's life. After he learned that Welles' oldest daughter, Chris, his childhood playmate, had long suspected that was his brother, he initiated a DNA test, which proved inconclusive. In his 2011 autobiography, Lindsay Hogg reported that his questions were resolved by his mother's close friend, Gloria Vanderbilt, who wrote that Fitzgerald had told her that Wells was his father. A 2015 Wells biography by Patrick McGillan, however, argues that Wells could not be the father. Fitzgerald had left the U.S. for Ireland May 39 and was pregnant at the time she returned late October, while Wells did not travel overseas during that period. Now, Lindsay Hogg grew up with a stepfather, American businessman Stuart Shuffle, who married Fitzgerald in 1946. Now, Lindsay Hogg began his career in 1965, directing episode of the British pop program Ready, Steady, Go, featuring artists such as the Rolling Stones, the Yardbirds, and the Who. Now, in addition to these, he directed episodes of Blackmail, The Informer, A Man of Our Times, Half Hour Story, and The Company of Five, which was a series of television plays. He served as the series director of the Ronnie Barker Playhouse in 68 and 69, an episode 80 director of the mystery supernatural anthology series Journey to the Unknown was released as part of a TV movie. Now, through his work on the Ready, Steady, Go, Lindsay Hogg became acquainted with some of the top rock artists of the day and was subsequently hired to direct promotional films for their songs. Some of his early work include the classic Beatles songs Paperback Writer, Rain, Hey Jude, and Revolution, uh, and the Rolling Stones' 2000 Night Years of Home, Jumpin' Jack Flash, and Child in the Moon. His work on these and other films let uh, Camera Image, uh, Camera Image, to award him a retrospective music video pioneer award in 2012. The Rolling Stones uh, really liked his work, and he was a approach in '68 to direct a full-length television special. Lindsay Hogg eventually conceived the Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus, featuring the Stones and other musicians playing in a circus atmosphere. Now, the band was not completely satisfied with the result, and the film did not see release until 1996, but then again, it created one of the most important videos of the 1960s, a quick one by While He's Away, by The Who, has to be seen to be believed, especially Keith Moon on the wet drums. Check it out. Now, Lizzie Hogg was then hired by the Beatles to direct the film, originally conceived as a television special, 
Get Back was to feature footage of the Beatles recording a new album and rehearsing for a concert appearance. However, the sessions were extremely acrimonious, and the film and album were shown for a time, following the Beatles' rooftop concert in January 69. <coughs> now, the acrimony eventually led to it uh, being re-released as a doc series 57 years later, and it seems everything was overhyped or underhyped, depending on how you look at it. Now, the Beatles eventually returned to the project in 1970 and released it, the newly retitled Let It Be, along with an album of the same name. Material originally captured for Lindsay Hogg's 70 documentary used by Peter Jackson for the documentary series The Beatles Get Back, which I think encompass anywhere between 57 and 87 uh, hours of audio and video. Now, following Let It Be, Lindsay Hogg continued his work in UK television, directing both episodes and TV movies, including work on Brides, Brideshead Revisited, one of the most important uh, uh, docu-series from the UK in the 1980s. His work in the BBC series Play for Today and Play of the Week and Brideshead Revisited were each nominated for BAFTA Awards in 74, 78, and 83, respectively, with Brideshead winning for Best Drama Series Serial. His second featured film as director, Nasty Habits, is a comedy satire of the Watergate scandal. His third theatrical film, The Sound of Murder, was released in 82. Now, he directed uh, numerous uh, music videos throughout the 70s, including many of the Rolling Stones and Paul McCartney and Wings. In 85, he directed a video for Wendy Whitney Houston's single, You Give Good Love, uh, during the 80s. He returned to directing concert films, such uh, luminary events as Simon and Garfunkel's A Concert, concert in Central Park, Neil Young's Neil Young in Berlin, and Paul Simon, Graceland, The African Concert. Now, his work in the 1980s also included directing TV movies of various plays and, and films, including adaptations of Dr. Fisher of Geneva, Master Harold and the Boys, As Is, and A Little Match Girl. Now, Lindsay Hogg's The Object of Beauty for the BBC Screen 2 series of TV films received positive views in 91, and his comedy drama for HBO Running Mates was broadcast in 92. Frankie Starlight, which followed, was met with mixed reception. Now, in 94, he directed a Roger Daltrey concert film, A Celebration, the music of Pete Townsend Lou, and the uh, VH, uh, VH1 television movie entitled Two of Us is a fictionalized account of the last meeting before between John Lennon and Paul McCartney. It's quite a good movie, actually. Now, he directed a film adaptation of Samuel Beckett's absurdist play Waiting for a Good O, which came out in 2001. Now, in addition to his television and film work, he's known for his work in the theater. He directed both the original 78 production, for which he was nominated for a Tony Award, and a 1980 revival of Whose Life Is It Anyway? He also directed Broadway productions of Agnes of God, The Boys of Winter, Off-Broadway, and he also helmed Larry Kramer's AIDS drama, The Normal Heart, in 85. Now, his autobiography entitled Luck and Circumstance, A Coming of Age in Hollywood, New York, and Points Beyond, was published in 2011. It chronicles his career and his relationship with Orson Welles. After a long hiatus from TV and film work, he began directing the television series Tinseltown in 2015. Now, on a personal side, he married Lucy Mary Davies in 67, they divorced in 71. He subsequently became the second wife of photographer uh, uh, Lucy Lindsay Hogg, excuse me, subsequently became the second wife of photographer Anthony Armstrong Jones, first Earl of Snowden in 78. Now, for 10 years in the 1970s, he was romantically involved with British actress and a very talented Jean Marsh. He also been involved with Gloria Vanderbilt, the person who assured Lindsay Hogg that Orson Welles was his father. In 99, he succeeded to the Baron T.C. of Rotterfield Hall in East Sussex after the death of his father, Sir Edward Lindsay Hoggs, who was a Ford baronet. Now on film, again, Journey to the Unknown, Let It Be, A-D-A-M, very underrated movie, by the way, A Touch of Eastern Promise, Occupations, Nasty Habits, Professional Foul, The Concert in Central Park, The TV Movie, The Sound of Murder, Neil Young in Berlin, Dr. Fisher of Geneva, uh, Master Harold and the Boys, As Is, Nazi Hunter, Hunter to Beat Clarence uh, Feld's Story, The Little Match Girl, Paul Simon Graceland, The African Concert, Murder by Moonlight, Nightmare Classics, The Object of Beauty, The Habitation of Dragons, Running Mates, A Celebration, The Music of Pete Townsend and the Who, Frankie Starlight, 
Ivana Trump's for a love of a love alone TV movie, The Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus, the final release, uh, final, uh, what do you call the release of the 1960 movie in 96, Guy or Guy, Alone, Two of Us and Waiting for Godot. On the, the video side, uh, these are classics again. The Beatles, Paperback Writer in Rain. Rolling Stone, She's a Rainbow, 2000 Light Years from Home, Drunken Jack Flash, Child in the Moon, then Hey Jude and Revolution, The Rolling Stones, Angie, then Do 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 Do, Heartbreaker, Silver Train and Dancing with Mr. D, Wings, Helen Wheels, uh, The Rolling Stones is Only Rock and Roll, Ain't Too Proud to Beg, Till the Next Goodbye and Fool to Cry, as well as Crazy Mommy, Mama, Hey Da Greta and Hot Stuff, Wings, of course, Mulligan Tire and Win a Little Luck, Elton John, Ego, the Rolling Stones, Miss You and Far Away Eyes, then Wings, London Town, then The Stones, Respectable, Start Me Up, Worried About You, Neighbors, Waiting on a Friend, and Hang Fire. Now, Whitney Houston, of course, uh, that was the only solo artist he worked with for a video, besides Elton John, and again, Whitney Houston, You Give Good Love, a classic of the Whitney uh, Houston oeuvre. So, whether you believe the rumors or not, uh, without, uh, he is the first super a director of music videos and movies that really no one talks about in the United States and Canada, but internationally, he made the Rolling Stones and Beatles, he presented them well, as the old Brian Epstein uh, line that John Lennon had referred to, God bless his soul. But Michael Lindsay Hogg, if he is Orson Welles, and it's, it's, it's five of one and, you know, six of one and a half dozen the other, uh, he had Orson Welles Panchet for direction and Panchet for seeing talent. And it's funny in the, the Let It Be Get Back uh, sessions, he's sort of the, the cool water. He's very, very positive, and I think that's what making him a good director. Because the two greatest rock and roll bands of the era was the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, and I don't think he uh, he took sides. Because the all, the all battle was what's the greatest rock and roll band of all time, Rolling Stones or the, the Beatles. But he would get into a little bit of triacal because if you look at Paperback Writer and Rain, it's like he's going like, you know, pop diva or boy band style, but the Rolling Stones, like Waiting on a Friend, were all completely stoned in the video. He just, he probably said, just film what's there. And that's what a good director does. So that's a, uh, the story of the legendary Michael Lindsay Hogg. If you like what we're doing here with our vintage uh, Beatles or Beatles Associated podcast, let us know with a like, comment, or subscribe. And in the comment section, if you've seen the multiple hour documentary on Disney, t- Disney tell our uh, followers what you think. I give it again uh, close to uh, eight and a half stars out of 10 or like a 4.25. Again, uh, it's a little bit too, little, too long in places, but that's like life. That's uh, not not every two-hour movie is going to be perfect, unless, you know, uh, it's a two-hour movie that's been cut to 157, those three, uh, you know, there's always five or ten scenes in a in a classic movie can be tightened, but I, <laughs> but Michael Lindsay Hogg, when he tells Ringo, I love him, uh, I love you, that's the, uh, <coughs> that's my highlight of the Ringo star side of the Let It Be Get Back docu-series. Thanks for listening, bye. <laughs>